In the last example, we looked at how to graph a, a circle. So this time, we're going to look and graph a, an ellipse. Um, this one turns out to be an ellipse, but I want to remind you that we have uh, the standard form for an ellipse, which is x squared over a squared um, plus y squared over b squared, and it's equal to 1. So... Uh, how do we how do we deal with this? Well, last time <clears throat> with a circle, we used the fact that uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, um, and we're going to use that here as well. Uh, that's how we're going to get this side. In fact, in fact, why don't we look at some stuff? It's kind of it's kind of weird because you you kind of got to notice some things, but once you see it, it might work out. Um, I have x. If I have x squared. Hmm, well, let's see. Let's think. We can graph this by making a table of values like we did on the last time, or we could just change it to Cartesian coordinates and then graph that way. Um, if we have a Cartesian, this is a Cartesian uh, equation, if we had uh, actual values for A and B, then we'd be able to graph the ellipse really, really simply, um, because on the x-axis, we would have whatever... Uh, a, it goes out to A, and then on the y-axis, it would go out to B, this would be negative, and then negative B, uh, and then you could just graph it like that. Um, so maybe uh, the other way would be just to, to write a table of values and then just plug stuff in, and it, it's really simple, but I would rather, I mean, and it's also a little bit more challenging, to change it to Cartesian coordinates. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit. It might take a little bit longer because I don't want to, like, look ahead. Uh, or, I mean, I want to show you, because I haven't done this yet, I want to show you, like, the thought process. So the goal of changing um, parametric equations into um, Cartesian equations, the goal is to... Um, Eliminate the t from our equations here. I just want something involving x and y. Uh, so let's think about this. I'm going to try the same trick that I used on the other one where I did uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Because uh, I have a 1 here, so maybe that'll be useful. So if I had, um, if I took y squared, that would be the same thing as, maybe I'll do it down here. That would be the same thing as 4 uh, actually, 4 squared sine squared. Well, maybe I'll write it differently. 4 sine of t. S nope. There. All of that squared. And uh, that would correspond to y squared. x squared, that would be 3 cosine of t squared. And then, I mean, I kind of want, I kind of want... Um, not like 9 cosine squared or 16 sine squared. So i got to figure out what, what I'm going to do with that. So I'm going to keep working here. I know that if I get something uh, like sine squared plus cosine squared, I'll, I'll take care of that one anyway. So let's see what I could do here. My goal is to get sine squared plus cosine squared because I know that's equal to 1, and that gets rid of my t values. That's the main thing. Remember, I'm trying to... You rewrite this using uh, only x's and y's. So I'll, I'll mess with this until I get sine squared plus cosine squared. And then I'll see what I did, and I'll do the same thing to uh, y squared and x squared. Hopefully that makes sense. Why am I doing the same thing? Because y squared, this is the same thing as y squared. Here's x squared, this is the same thing as x squared. So whatever I do to the green to manipulate them, I'll have to do to the red. Um, and then hopefully I'll end up with something that looks like an ellipse or some other type of uh, Cartesian uh, graph. So um, let's just simplify a little bit. I have uh, 16 sine squared t, and then I have 9 cosine squared t. And then if I wanted to get rid of the 16 and get rid of the... Uh, Get rid of the 16, get rid of the 9. I could just divide. I mean, some people are like, wait, why can you just divide? I'm playing around with it. I'm, I'm really just trying to get sine squared plus cosine squared. 
So I'm playing around with it. And then you'll see what happens, and I'll make it valid at the end. Hopefully. I mean, I haven't done this yet, so we'll see. So I'll divide by 16 here, and I'll divide by 9 here. So that goes away, and then I just have sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t, and that is equal to just 1. Okay, now I'm going to work with my red. Uh, so I have y squared and x squared. Then what did I do in the next step? I divided by 16 for this and 9 for that. So I'll do that here. So that so this line, those two things are equivalent. Uh, now I'm going to make this line equivalent. So I took the y and I divided it by 16. And I took the x, sorry, y squared and I divided it by 16. Took the x squared, divided it by 9. So these are now equivalent, which means, I mean, I just simplified and got that. So really, this, these are equivalent as well. Oh, if I add them. So maybe I'll, I'll add them here now. Now it kind of works. 16 plus x squared and 9. And I know, so if these are equivalent and this equals 1, then that means this equals 1. I hope that was understandable. It's kind of organized, at least. So that is a parametric equation, or actually uh, the Cartesian equation for these parametric equations. We just haven't dealt with that at all. Um, sometimes the, the, the cool thing about parametric equations is that you can get part of an ellipse just by limiting the t value. Or you can get the whole entire ellipse by uh, going from 0 to 2 pi or however far it takes to, to get to uh, an entire ellipse. If you wanted to do, say this, the, the initial point is when you plug in 0 and the terminal point for this parametric equation, or for these parametric equations, the terminal point is when you plug in t equals 2 pi. So like it goes all the way around. Uh, if you, you start at 0 and it goes all the way around. All right, so if you wanted part of the ellipse, you could, instead of saying starting at, or ending at 2 pi, you could start it at 0 and end, you know, at whatever that could be, uh, pi over, no, just pi or whatever it could, I don't, I don't know, I'm just making stuff up, but you can restrict this so you get partial ellipses, um, which you can't really do with Cartesian coordinates, so that's one advantage, you can get partial graphs and it's kind of cool. Um, so, anytime you're given parametric equations with sine and cosine, perhaps one of the tricks is to use the Pythagorean trigonometric identity, um, and then it helps you uh, convert it to a Cartesian uh, equation. All right, I'm going to be done with this. Goodbye.